Hello, my name is Philip Rulo with Rultract, and I am going to explain how to set up our thoracic post system uh, specifically for the NUS procedure. As you can see here, there are specific bends in the post that are designed to allow for more space for the assistant or the surgeon. The first part that you're going to pull from your tray will be the combination clamp. You can see this clamp has notches cut out in it that are designed to go over or around the bolts on the OR table bed rail. So you can see we can clamp directly over a bolt and then the notches will go around it or you can clamp in between the bolts as well. What you don't want to do is actually hit a bolt. If you hit a bolt try to clamp down on that bolt you won't get a secure grip on the bed rail and the clamp will wobble so we're gonna ideally you'd like to go in between them if you can if you feel there's a bolt here and just try to put the clamp right around the bolt and then you go ahead and squeeze those jaws closed and tighten the knob okay so go ahead and grab your clamp Feel along the OR table bed rail to determine the best location to put your clamp. Um, for the NUS procedure, we like to go at the base of the neck, just above the shoulder. So I'll feel for a location of a bolt. And then ideally, I would like to clamp just before the bolt here. Now I'm going to squeeze the jaws closed and then tighten the knob. I don't want to put it on the bed rail and then turn the knob to bring the jaws together. What I want to do is squeeze the jaws closed and then tighten the knob. And tighten it as tight as you can get it. Go ahead and take your bottom post. And as I said earlier, we like to have the bend going out toward the patient's head. Then tighten the wing handle. Next, we will take the top post. And again, as I said earlier, I like to have this part of the bend going toward the patient's head. This allows for more space for the assistant or the surgeon. Go ahead and set that on. You may have to turn it to make sure that it seats properly. Next, we are going to take your rotating extender bar. Now, in most cases, uh, for pediatric patients, I like to have the extender bar put on the top post in what we refer to as inverted position. Um, in other words, upside down. If you have a large chested adult patient, you'll want to put it on the top post with the knob on the top. But in this case, for the children's hospital, I think you're probably best suited to go inverted. Now you'll slide this on to your top post and you'll lock it into position so that it comes out over the center of the patient's chest. As you can see here, there are detents or holes on all four sides of this top post. So it's important once you find a position that you're comfortable with that you tighten the knob and be sure that that knob goes into one of the detents on this top post. So you can see here it's locked into position and it will not come off. So we tightened the lock knob. Once you're happy with the position of the rotating extender bar, you can go ahead and turn the knob to lock it into position. Next, you're going to take your ratchet assembly now when I put this on for the NUS procedure, I like to have the cable portion 
with the spool out over the patient's chest and the handle over the patient's head. So you go ahead and slide that on. Again, I'd like to see right over the center of the sternum. Now just like our top post, our rotating extender bar has detents or holes cut into it. So when you slide your ratchet assembly on, you're going to want to make sure that the lock knob pin is tightened down into one of these holes. So once you are happy with the location of the ratchet assembly, go ahead and line it up. You can see I'm, I line it up with the marks here. And then I turn the lock knob and tighten it all the way down so it doesn't come off. Now, if for some reason I'm not into a detent, that lock knob will only tighten to that point, as you can see. So if I line it up with the marks, I can tighten it so the lock knob goes all the way down. Now it will not come off. Once you find the location that you're happy with for your ratchet assembly, on the rotating extender bar, go ahead and tighten it into place. Then you would flip the ratchet lever and you can go ahead and pull the snap clip down, attach your desired attachment to elevate the sternum and you are ready to use the rule track for the NUS procedure. Okay, when I refer to flipping the ratchet lever to the opposite side in order to lower the cable. Here's the ratchet lever. Go ahead and switch it to the opposite side and you can see you can lower the cable. Once the surgeon is finished with the rule track in elevating the sternum for the NUS procedure or if they need to adjust the position during the procedure, they'll need to lower or reverse the ratchet. Now to do this, you can see that now this ratchet is actually under tension, meaning it's elevating the sternum. Go ahead and try to turn this. You'll see that it will not turn in both directions. No matter how hard I pull here, this isn't going to turn. So I turn it in the direction it will move. You can see I could turn it this way and you can hear it clicking but you cannot turn it the opposite direction. So what you'll want to do is turn it in the direction it will move with one hand. Do not let go of this handle. And then as you're turning it in the direction it will move, go ahead and switch the lever to the opposite side and then slowly lower the sight. Now, if it needs to be elevated again, switch the lever to the opposite side and go ahead and elevate. Now if I want to lower it, I can see that I can't move it in this direction, so I'm going to move it in a direction it will move, and I'm holding it, releasing by switching the lever, and then go ahead and lower the sight. If for some reason the surgeon is unable to grasp how to release the lever while turning the crank handle in the direction it will move. Something that can be done in order to reduce tension on the cable, uh, which will help switch the ratchet lever, uh, simply lean on the top post. You can see as I'm leaning on the top post, you can see the tension in the cable is reduced significantly. Once you reduce that tension, I would still suggest holding the handle and then flipping the lever, slowly lowering the sight. Okay, once the surgeon is finished using the rule track to elevate the sternum for the NUS procedure, we are ready to remove it from the OR table. Uh, to do so, the first thing to do would be to wind the cable. Now you're going to want to remove this in pieces like we set it up. Reason being there's a lot of weight on the end of this top post. Uh, so if you were to just lift it, 
the amount of weight on the post could cause it to tilt over onto the patient if you're not ready for this amount of weight. So you can see that's a bad idea. So what you'll want to do is, as I said, first wind the cable. Second, go ahead and turn this lock knob. Grasp the ratchet firmly. Slide it off. Next, you'll take your rotating extender bar. Turn the lock knob. Hold it firmly. Slide it off. Next, we'll remove the top post. I like to hold it here and by the collar. Go ahead and lift it. And then I want to remove the post from the clamp so you'll turn the wing handle. Go ahead and slide this up. Now we can remove the clamp now or wait until after the procedure is over. To do so, you're just going to turn the knob counterclockwise. Sometimes because of the amount of force that the retractor was under, the clamp uh, jaws may stick together. If so, just kind of shake it, they'll pop free. Go ahead and remove it. That completes the setup instructions for our thoracic set. If you should have any questions, please contact me via email or phone.